Welcome back. I'm Kim Bailey. She's fully on Rosebourne. This is Inside Exec, and we're actually in a room together for the first time in a while. And it's been a very exciting morning so far. We uh, got waylaid trying to find the right room that we should be in to do the recording, and then we got challenged. I did. I got challenged by technology and in the uh, locker rooms and and the app that I had to download. And I was in. Eventually, we worked out I was actually tapping on the wrong location. So. All of that is now resolved and we're actually here to talk to you. <laughs> so first up today, we're going to talk about money. I'm going to talk about appropriate remuneration for the work that you're doing. And we're looking at it from both sides, as we always do, from the point of view of if it's you that's considering why you're not paid what you think you're worth, and also from the employer's point of view. So if we look, first of all, from the employer's point of view, obviously they have financial constraints and management issues and budgeting and all of those things that have to come into play. There also, I think, can often be complacency in that you have someone who is reliable, solid in the role, knows what they're doing and is getting remuneration that you feel is appropriate. But Perhaps you're in a situation where you had the opportunity to look at the marketplace for whatever reason and you realise that that person's not... If you, if, that, if you had to replace that person, then you would be paying a very different rate. There's a bit of mental gymnastics that happens at that point when you find out that you've actually got a bit of a bargain. Not only have you got someone who's good at their job and loves the, the organisation and is committed and loyal and all of those things, but you're getting them at less than market rates. I guess sometimes the reaction is, aren't I lucky? Uh, Well, you are, but you also have to be responsible because what would happen if you lost that person? Not only are you going to lose all of the things that you value, but you're going to have to pay more for the next person to come along that you might have to train and certainly you'll have to get them, give them time to settle into your organisation and, and how it works. So there is a a decision that you have to make at review time, if that's what you do, about looking at what the market is offering for someone in that role and then thinking about what you can manage to afford in terms of increase and be honest about it. Be honest if you can't match what the market rate is. You've got to be honest and say, we're not in a position where we can match the market rate. We know that that's what you would get if you went anywhere else we value you, we, we would like to show you our appreciation in ways other than the financial and start to work on things that might be more important because we've talked before about the money, the actual dollars, not being the thing that holds people in a job or takes them away from the job. It's what they can do with the money. So if you can find a way of providing something so that they don't have to shell out, so maybe it's that you subsidise their transport costs or you give them some study time, some study leave, some pay for courses for them to do, something that they would have to pay for anyway that you can allocate from another part of your budget, not the salary part of your budget, then that would be a good solution for everyone, I would think. But she's sitting here with crossed arms, I better let her talk. It's so so much easier when she's on Zoom and I can just not look at the screen. (laughs) Oh dear. Speak. Yes, all right. Thank you. I agree with all of that. And I also think that as an employer, you, you put a lot of effort in doing things to retain and grow customer satisfaction and, and retention. And by ignoring a person who has fulfilled that, being loyal and um, stayed with you a long time, you're taking them for granted is the message you're giving mm-hmm. unintentionally yep. perhaps. And I know about the budget, I know that we, you know, got limited funds and how to spend them and I agree about you give other things other than salary but I have to say, no, that's not a good argument for not raising a salary to market value because what happens is that person could leave and if they did then you've got to do it anyway so why why not do it right the first time so um, I think for an employer it's very very important that you continuously review existing positions and keep it um, within your company policy Mm -hmm. um, at least market value or some like to go above market value otherwise it's a lose-lose and you're spending money 
and you not behaving in a way that you are preaching sort of thing. As an employee, if you're in that situation, it's also a difficult position to be in because you love the place, you very valued, you feel valued because everybody comes to you for your opinion and yes, they might be giving you, you know, voucher here or, or whatever. They might be flexible, that suits your life and everything. But you've got to be careful um, not to think, I'm okay, I'm okay, and then every now and again you keep hearing somebody's getting paid and you have now some of people um, that maybe even report to you are going to get paid more than you. Mm. So because what happened there is subconsciously you sort of become a bit resentful, even though you don't want to and you love everything about the job and the place and all of that. So my suggestion for that situation is don't let it get to the point where it is an issue. Talk to your manager about it. Just say, look, oh, you know, when you look at where I am and where the market is, there's a big gap. But can we talk about that and see how we're going to work together to make sure that yeah. I don't get so far out? Because another two years, I'm going to have a bigger gap if we're keeping that. And absolutely say how much you love the place and, and all of that. And you'd rather not leave and you're not going to leave just for the money. You're not threatening and you're not going to leave for the money. But just say it. Just say, I don't want to feel like I'm being um, you know, taken for granted. Mm. I'll just give you a little anecdote as an example, shows you how wrong this situation can go. I worked as a consultant for one of the big utility companies here, and it was a time where they were changing structure from 73 classifications of employee to five. And so there was a lot of retraining and information that had to go out. So there were 10 consultants brought in from three different companies, all, we were all doing exactly the same thing. We were all in the same room, working together. And it turned out after some time that one of them found out what the rate was that some of the others were getting. And everyone was on a different rate. Even within the organisations that had placed us, we were on different rates. We, as outsiders to the organisation, thought that, that it should be brought to the attention of the project manager who was within the organisation that we're working for. And she berated us. She said, how dare you talk to one another about what you're getting and really (laughs) didn't handle it particularly well. Even though there was camaraderie in the group, there there were people who didn't understand why they weren't getting paid as much as some of the others for doing the same work. And it did turn to resentment and it did turn to them actually saying, oh, well, you're the favourite, why don't you do it? They'll Mm. love your work, they won't review mine. As a warning to employers, if you are using contractors or consultants, they will talk to one another. They Mm. will know what everyone else is getting. So don't fall into that trap of paying them all differently. Because if they're doing the work, they're doing the same work, they get the same pay. Simple. But that that same thing applies across organisations as well. People meet people in the same industry. They talk. I know no two jobs in two different organisations are identical, but they're pretty close. Mm. And uh, again, not not only you, people will find out they're underpaid, <laughs> um, but also they your reputation, company reputation. Yeah. People will say, oh, don't want to work for them. They really mm. don't mistreat mm. their people right. Or these people pay a lot more and they do less hours or whatever. Mm. The argument. Yeah. So it's a reputation and credibility. Yeah. And also I think you have to be aware that If someone leaves your organisation and they talk about how much more money they're getting, they're not leaving because they're going to get more money on its own. Yes. Money is not the driving force. Now, when I left the public sector to go into private enterprise, there was a, in those, this is 30, nearly 40 years ago, no, 35 years ago, let's say, there was a $10,000 a year gap, Mm. difference between the two amounts of money I was being paid. In those days, it was still like a quarter of the salary. So yeah. suddenly it was this enormous amount of money that I was going to get it, yeah. what we called outside. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't leave because of the money. I left because I had told myself of 10 years in the public sector and that was going to be it and then I would move on to something else. So I had already decided. And, and the amount of money wasn't the thing that made me choose this job. It was, that it, provide, it was the opportunity it provided and where it was located. 
So that's another thing. I, I think we, as employers, sometimes we say, oh, well, they're just going for more money. They're going to get more there, so that's why they're going. That's not the case. No. And, and that's, once again, lazy thinking. You think that because you don't actually want to address why they would dare to think mm. that they should leave your organisation. It might be as simple as they're going to get better, different experience somewhere else and you have to let them go because, as I always say, there's an opportunity that they'll come back and they'll come back with other yeah. experience that you will find useful. So in terms of the money, I think we need to focus on the fact that there are market rates for mm. a reason and you do need to look at them and you do need to work out how you can close the gap if if it's there and work collaboratively with the person that in that you're talking to but also watch out for falling into the traps of thinking that they won't talk to one another inside industry outside industry <laughs> just in the local paper <laughs> they might see yeah. the ads that are being put out so yeah it's readily available yeah 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 and money is not the answer always no and it's not the reason always that's right all right, we've covered that for you today. I'm Kim Bailey. She's Fuliana Osborne. This is Inside Exec.